If you were successful, somebody along the line gave you some help. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we had that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. The internet didn't get invented on its own. Government research created the internet. If you've been successful, you, don't, you didn't get there on your own. No, 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 You, no, you didn't no. get there on your own. I, I'm always struck by people who think, well, well you got the picture. We have a naked communist. I've been telling you this for three and a half years. Most of you doubted me. Many of you are social liberals, so you figure whatever he does is good because you don't want to vote for the rigid Christian on the other side because basically it's all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll to most Americans under the age of uh, whatever. Now you're coming to understand that Barack Obama dismisses any success you have as your own. It's the government that built your tattoo parlor. It's the government that put you through medical school. It's the government that drives you 100 hours a week as a lawyer. It's the government that keeps you on the radio. It's the government that built the... It wasn't uh, Marconi or Tesla who invented the microphone, a radio rather. It, w it wasn't Tesla who invented radio. It was Obama's great-grandfather or someone else in government that we don't know yet. Perhaps uh, Big Sis's grandmother invented the microphone. We don't know. It was some genius in Washington or in the state capitol who invented the microphone, the telephone, uh, the whirlpool machine, the street light. It was all invented by somebody in government. It was not invented by an individual in an, in an, in, in an enterprise system. That, that's passe, the idea of enterprise. It's governments that should run everything, according to Obama. Eventually, there should be one channel, OBC, Obama Broadcast Corporation. Everything that's said on the air comes through Central Command, Obama Broadcast Corporation. And then we'll have a cleaner system. You know, competition, by the way, is messy and expensive. Look at North Korea, how clean and, and, and beautiful it is. There's a country with no competition. Everything's run through the psychopath that runs North Korea. That's the kind of system that Obama would like in America, where everything goes through Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Alibaba and the 40 Thieves will decide, as the central clearinghouse... What you think, what you read, what you say, what you eat, what you breathe, where you swim, the shoes you wear should be government shoes. Why do you need all of this clutter of shoes made in slave factories in, Malay in, in uh, Indonesia or whatever? What you need are shoes made by the government. Government shoes. Obama Shoe Corporation. You need government tires. Why do you want such competition? Look at the amount of money wasted on advertising between tire companies. So capitalistic, so wasteful. Why not have a government tire company, Obama Tire Company? He already has the Volt. Look how many people have lined up to buy his electric car. We know how good the electric car is. It's something modeled along the lines of the uh, car made in Yugoslavia that everybody couldn't wait to get. Or the Russian car. You notice how great the Russian cars are or the Chinese cars. People can't wait to get them. American cars, cars built on the backs of uh, entrepreneurs, those are passe. They're wasteful. But we need our government cars, government jobs, government microphones, government government everything. So I rest my case. Forget the sarcasm. We have the most dangerous, divisive presidency in the American in American history. Unfortunately, we don't have anyone on the other side articulating it, so it falls upon the shoulders of myself and a few others, frankly, in the media. If it wasn't for us, you'd be living in a, in a total dictatorship of ideas. How do you feel about the president saying that somebody else made your business happen? How do you feel about him saying that if you've been successful, you didn't get there on your own? Now, what he's doing here, and again, you can call me at the phone number, 1-800-449-8255. What he is doing here is reflecting the inner Obama. Here is a man who from the cradle has been steeped in communist rhetoric of this type. You don't want to believe it, but you better believe it. He's showing himself for what he is. He hates the American way. He hates the American system. He hates capitalism. He hates the foundations of democracy. He hates the founding fathers. He hates everything that we stand for in this country. And he is showing himself as he cracks up on the road. And I am worried, very deeply worried about the president's mental and physical well-being, not only by the fact that when he goes off script, he shows us, shows us who he actually is, 
but that he's wasting away in size and in, in girth. The man is dangerously thin. As someone who has studied uh, health all of his life, as an amateur now, not as a medical doctor, but as an amateur looking in on health things, I would say that Obama is right now dangerously thin. He is dangerously thin-skinned and dangerously thin in weight, certainly dangerously thin in mental capacity. He is cracking up from the strain. Now, that's both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because the real Obama is coming out from the hidden Obama. The hidden agenda is starting to emerge from the nice guy agenda. Unfortunately, we have no one on the other side to help us. 